Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters. It's a very beautiful day, so I thought that why not sit outside and do a little talk on a very special topic, which is well wisher. You know, well wisher is a very beautiful word, which means khair khwa. And the person who is a well wisher is a person who's a very kind person because he wants the best out of you all the time because he's an honest person. That was that is why Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said that you cannot be a Mormon until and unless you like the same for your brothers and sisters, you know. So this is also a, a definition of a Mormon that whatever he likes for himself, he wants to have the same thing, you know, for his brother or sister as well, you know. So in my opinion, the best well-wishers are your parents because your parents have got this attachment with you. A, ch a mother has got an attachment with her child. So that is why she wants the best out of it. But the problem is that in today's life, everything is changing around us rapidly and uh, the parents have got a huge responsibilities and in this society they also have got a huge pressure on them which is why they have kind of you know uh, moved away uh, from their responsibilities of bringing up a child uh, in in a way that could last forever. Because a well-wisher is someone that he wants the best out of you till the end, You're right? But today, in today's life, the parents, uh, the relationship between parents and children is limited only to this life, which is 60 to 70 years. They are only worried about their child in this span of 60 to 70 years in this life. They want their child to have a big house, you know, cars and a good job, you know, and go to good school and all that because they have got this pressure of the society. See, when you detach yourself from, uh, from the slavery of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you come thinking that you are free, but you're not free you suddenly become a slave of the society and then the society will dictate you what you have to do, what you have to eat, what color you, like, you should like, you know, what dress you should wear and where to go and do the job, you know, all these kind of who, who, the, the friends that you choose, you know, so everything, everything is decided for you uh, by the society. Hence, there's a lot of pressure on the parents, which is why now the, and the parents have, you know, turned away from the real responsibility of a child. So a third party is included in this upbringing, which is a maid, you know. So now the child is left at the mercy of a maid, you know. Now the maid hasn't got that kind of attachment and love with the child you know, that a mother is supposed to have. Now the father is going out and he's working as well and the mother is also busy working, you know. And uh, just because, you know, the child has to go to the best school, the child has to wear the branded clothes and, uh, uh, and the child has to live in a proper house, you know. So these pressures have made both parents, you know, to go out and work. Thus, thus leaving the child alone at home at the mercy of a maid, right? So which is why, you know, the, the element of well-wishing, the element of the khair khwai, you know, is, becomes less and less. So that is why, you know, uh, these days the, the parents have got a lot of pressure so in the, uh, in the old, old days, you know, the mother used to be with the child all the time because, you know, for a mother, integrating family 
or job with the family, you know, is a very complex and difficult thing because she already has got a huge responsibility of raising a child, you know, until a child is four years old, uh, the mother, you know, has to constantly, uh, you know, attend to him. And then after that, till he becomes like at the age of uh, 10 or 12, the mother still should be in contact with, with him or her all the time. But if the mother, and that is her main responsibility, and the father has to go out and work, you know, and make sure that the mother and the child are not disturbed and they get a comfortable life. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Ar-Rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa as that the man is a maintainer of the woman, a maintainer of the family. You know, he maintains the family. He looks after the family. He protects the family. So this is his job so that he can go out and work hard and, and look after their, their, their family financially, you know, and provide uh, the best comfortable life for for the family so that the mother can perform with her optimal performance you know that she can give her optimal performance to the child so when the child grows up you know they can present it to the society because a child is a building block of the society so every household is presenting their children to the society so that they become their good citizens right so when you leave the child at the mercy of uh, of a maid uh, then the child is, you know, is spoiled because he does not get that love of, uh, of the mother that, that is, is, is lost. And also uh, the problem is that these days, you know, um, um, the parents are well wishes of their children for only, like I've said, like 60 to 70 years. They don't care. They don't care what happens to the child after he dies. Now, this is a huge problem because in the past, the parents were worried about the child that what is going to be the end of the child. Their relation with their children was in this life after and in the hereafter, right? So that they knew that where our child is going to go if he dies. So they used to give them the proper education of this life and the religious life as well, so that he is successful in this life and the hereafter. But now that is not happening. So the parents are only worried about 60 years of the life. And they are not worried about where the child is going to go after he dies. If he ends up in a hell, you know, they don't care because they are only worried about this life. So now what is happening that the duty of the parents has been taken uh, by the religious scholars, you know, by the people in the mosques and in the, in, in the religious schools, you know, they have taken this job and now they are basically telling and advising and doing campaigns and all these things, you know, so that somehow that child was supposed to be the responsibility of the parents and now they can at least uh, show them or guide them the right path, you know. They sound strict because that's how it is. Because that's how it is. They are not paid to be strict, right? They are not paid to be strict and they don't get anything out of that strictness but hatred, right? So they have to stick, you know, <clears throat> to the reality, to the teachings of Quran and Sunnah. And that's why, you know, they, uh, they, they try to... Uh, to to advise, you know, the people and um, to advise the people uh, in the correct possible way with the honesty, what the Quran says and what the Sharia says, right? So actually this was the job of the parents. So now they are the khair khwa, they are your well wishes till the end in this life and in the hereafter, you know. So who is your well wisher? The religious scholars, you know, your teachers, the Mashaikh, now they are the well-wishers because they wish the best for you in this life and in the hereafter, which is never-ending life. They might sound, like I said, they might sound strict, but you have to recognize your well-wisher, right? Because a doctor sticks a needle in you as painful. He does it because he can, you know, he can cure you. 
You know, you can't be enemy or, or you know, turn uh, hatred towards them, you know, be hatred, be hateful towards them because just because they are sticking a needle in you or just because uh, they cut you open and do an operation because they are doing it to save you, right? To save you from dying. Similarly, the spiritual doctors are doing this, stopping you from wrongdoings which you like the entertainment and all these things, they stop you from that because, uh, because they want to, you know, cure you. They want, uh, they want you to be successful in the hereafter, you know. Although it might s sound strict, you know, stopping you from the things which Quran and Sharia has, has, has ordered, you know, you not to do these things, all these wrongdoings you know there's a huge list of wrongdoings so whenever you hear you know um, spiritual doctors they talk about you know uh, about they forbid whenever they forbid you know people not to do wrong things uh, they are seen with hatred and and uh, not knowing or not recognizing your khairkhwa or your well-wishers but i tell you they are the true well-wishers you know of you because they are worried that what is going to happen to you in the hereafter, you know. And uh, they have got the proper knowledge because they have gone to proper, you know, religious schools and studied there for eight years. And um, since, you know, they are seen with a hatred, which I think is not, is, 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 is wrong because I look at myself, you know, the, the kind of life I used to live in London for 10 years. You know, it was I was a Muslim only by name. You know, I never prayed, uh, or I never thought about Sharia, or I never thought about the sins. You know, uh, that I used to commit. But when I came here and I uh, and I learned from the spiritual doctors or religious scholars, and I found out that everything that I was doing was wrong. You know, and it, it was against my uh, uh, my nature. All the entertainment that I used to do uh, was not uh, aligned with Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given me the strength because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided me, you know, because um, I struggled for it, you know. I wanted to change, uh, so I got in contact with the spiritual doctors, with the mashayikh, with the, you know, and uh, they advised me. And uh, I, f it, in the, initially, in the beginning, it sounded strict as well. It sounded strict. And also it was very difficult for me. But with time, with the, with, you know, when, when you are in the company of mashayikh and good people and, and religious scholars, you change slowly and slowly and you enjoy and feel the warmth of Iman and Islam in you, you know. <clears throat> so this is what you know happened to me, and now I'm a changed man, and uh, and I I feel you know uh, I do I I feel that I I wish I I met these well wishers a long time back so that I could save myself from doing all those sins that I've done. But now I can only toba and istighfar and ask forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He forgives me for what I have done. You know in the past 10 years in London and in, you know, all my life. So, but now I have, you know, recognized my well wishes. But this, I tell you, only happens if you are ready, if you really want to change, right? And this will not happen if you, uh, if you show hatred towards these people. Uh, because I know that uh, whenever uh, I was advised by a, someone, you know, a well wisher, uh, I would say, yeah, you know, uh, it's true, whatever you are saying. But at the moment, my iman level is not that much. Like I can, I can follow these teachings, you know. But I never said, uh, or, 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 or was never hateful about their advice. I always took their advice, uh, but I also said that Allah gave me the strength to change. And in the end, that is what happened, you know. And this only happened because of the well-wishers. The parents were the well-wishers, but now they have got the pressure of the society and they are not telling you these things. 
So the duty has been given uh, to religious scholars and mashayikh by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now they are teaching us and telling us these things. So we should listen to them with open heart and not be hateful because there's a lot of hate going out, out there. Remember, these guys are not paid. They are doing it for free. That, that is the biggest proof of that, that they are your well-wishers. They are not paid. They are doing it for free on internet. They are doing, they've got podcasts and um, they are in the mosque and everywhere, you know, they are doing it for free. This advice thing and going to the people and helping them out, you know. So we have to appreciate that. And we have to listen to them, you know. At least if you don't want to change, then fine. But don't be hateful towards them. And just pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, give me the strength to change. So recognize your well-wisher. And your well-wisher is he who is worried about your life in this life and in the hereafter as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength uh, to change ourself, uh, ourselves and also... Uh, to recognize these well-wishers as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.